Well, let's finish up our rounding lessons for this week. Are you glad it's Friday? This is the last Friday in September. Can you believe it? It's going by so fast. Next Friday is October. All right. Halloween month next Friday. It's going by fast. Well, let's take a look at these problems. So on number one here, we've got the same number each time, but it's asking us to round it to a different place. Okay. So we've got to pay close attention to what the place is that it's asking us to round it to. So the part A says round it to the nearest thousand, which here's the thousands place. Look to the number to the right of it. Four or less, let it rest. Five or more, raise that score. So with three raises up to a four, so it's going to be 544 thousand everything to the right of it one two three becomes zeros this time round it to the nearest ten thousand so here's our ten thousands place all right so to the right of the ten thousand is a three four or less let it rest it stays the same so five four and then everything else is a zero so that is 540,000. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Got my zeros right. All right. Letter C, we're taking the same number, but this time we're rounding it to the hundred thousands. So we've got a five here in the hundred thousands place. To the number to the right is a four. Four or less, let it rest. So it stays a five. And everything else, one, two, three, four, five zeros. So that's going to be 500,000. So the number, the answer changes each time depending on what you round it to, doesn't it? In some cases, it might be the same, but most of the time it's going to change. All right, question number two says, complete each statement by rounding the number to the given place value. So we're doing the same thing. 2,841 rounded to the nearest hundred. Okay, I've got an eight there in the hundred spot with a four to the right of it. So four or less, let it rest. So that eight stays the same. So we have two eight and then everything after it becomes a zero. So 2,800 is the answer. Going on to our next page. I can turn it. All right. We got 32,851 rounded to the nearest hundred. Underline a hundred place. Looks like we're going to be doing lots of rounding practice today. All right. So we're rounding the eight. To the right of it is a five. Five or more. Raise that score. So that eight's going to become a nine. So it's going to be three, two, nine. And zero, zero, 32,900. Okay, this number, 132,891, rounded to the nearest 100 again. So 100 spot. Okay, we look to the right of it, and we've got a 9. Five or more, we raise the score, so that 8 becomes a 9. So it's 132,900. Zero, zero. 132,900. This one is 6,299, rounded to the nearest thousand this time. So make sure you pay attention to what you're supposed to round. All right, so we've got a six in the thousands place with a two beside it, four or less, let it rest. So that six stays the same. Everything after it, one, two, three, becomes a zero. So the answer is 6,000. Letter E, 36,599 rounded to the nearest thousand he is what? Okay, look to the number to the right. It's a five. Four or more, uh, five or more, raise the score. That six becomes a seven. Three, seven. 
37,000. Put those zeros in there after the 7. Letter F, we're rounding to the nearest 1,000 and 100,699. The thousands places a 0 in it, but to the right of it is a 6. Five or more, raise the score. It raises the zero to a one. So one, zero, one, 100, 1,000. Everything else becomes a zero. 100, 1,000. Letter G. 40,984 rounded to the nearest 10,000. So we've moved over to the 10,000s place now. Okay. I've got a four in the ten thousands place with a zero to the right of it. That zero is four or less, so we let it rest. So the four stays the same, and it makes this answer 40,000. Are you getting it? Lots of practice today. Letter H. 54,984 rounded to the nearest ten thousands is what? Okay, well, we look to the right of the 10,000s place. Did I do that right? Mr. Hilton, pay attention. That's the 1,000s place. Here's the 10,000s place. The 5 is in the 10,000s place. We're rounding the nearest 10,000. We look to the right of it, and we see a 4. 4 or less, let it rest. The 5 stays the same. So the answer is 50,000. 997,010 rounded to the nearest 10,000 is, Mr. Hilton, make sure you underline the 10,000 place this time. I did. We look to the right of that, and there's a seven. Five or more, raise the score. Oh, no, this is one of those confusing ones. We raise, change the nine to a 10, which gives us one more 100,000. And that makes it. A ten hundred thousand? What? What is this? What's ten hundred thousand look like? You got a one zero and then one, two, three, four, five zeros after it. One, two, three, four, five. Well, there's that number that's a million again. That one's kind of confusing, isn't it? Let's think about a number line on this one. What two numbers are this? is this between if we're rounding to the 10,000? Well, 990,000. And what's 10,000 more than 990,000? If we added 10,000 to that, we would get what our answer was, 1 million. So we see with the 7 there, halfway between would be 995,000. It's 997. So it's more than halfway up to the t 1 million. So the answer is 1 million. Moving right along, we got more to do. Going to have a bunch to do in your assignment today. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're rounding to the nearest 100,000 and 360,034. All right, we've got a six beside it. What are we going to do? Five or more, raise the score, change the three to a four. And everything after it becomes a zero, so it's 400,000. 436,709 rounded to the nearest 100,000. So four in the 100,000s place with a three to the right, four or less, we're gonna let him rest. So that answer is also 400,000. Letter L, 852,442 rounded to the nearest 100,000 is, all right, we've got an 8 there with a 5 beside it. 5 or more, raise the score. We change the 8 to a 9. It makes it 900,000. Boy, that was a lot of practice, wasn't it? But guess what? We're not done. Now we've got some word problems to work out. So let's look at these together. You're going to have several of them on your assignment today, too. But you're getting to be rounding experts, so I know you can handle it. Empire Elementary School needs to purchase water bottles for field day. There are 2,142 students. That's a big old school, isn't it? Principal Vader, oh my goodness, this must be in Star Wars land. Principal Vader rounded to the nearest hundred 
to estimate how many bottles to order. Okay, so he rounded to the nearest hundred. What did he round? Well, I guess he rounded how many students there were, because every student's going to need a bottle, right? So let's take this number, 2,142. He rounded to the nearest hundred to estimate how many bottles, how many water bottles to order. So we're rounding this to the hundred spot. Four or less, let it rest. So let's draw a little rounding symbol. That's just going to stay a one. So the answer is going to be 2,100. Now, if he rounded to that, the question is, will there be enough water, water bottles for everyone? Well, how many people are there? There's 2,142. How many did he round to to order? Only 2,100. So if there's that many people and he only ordered that many, is everybody going to have one? No is our answer because there's 42 more people than there are bottles that he ordered. And then we have to explain that principal Vader did not order enough water bottles. Because 2,142 rounded to the hundreds place is only 2,100. So they're not going to have enough water bottles. What's he going to do? I guess he should have rounded to a different place. What do you think? All right, let's move on. Opening day at the New York State Fair in 2012 had an attendance of 46,753. Decide which place value to round 46,753 to if you were writing a newspaper article. Round the number and explain why it's an appropriate unit to round the attendance to. So we're writing a newspaper article. And I assume in the newspaper article, we're trying to tell people about how many people came to the fair. So what should we round it to? So here's our number. 46,753. Well, we want to be as close as we can because we want to give the correct news. What if we rounded to the uh, ten thousands place? What would it round to? Fifty thousand, because this six would make this a five. We could say there were about fifty thousand people there. Well, that would be true. Could you get make it even more precise? What if we rounded to the thousands place? The six would become a what? A seven. Eight. The seven would be cut, make this a seven. The seven, five or more raised the score would make this six a seven. So we would say there's about 57,000 people there. So round the number, explain why it's an appropriate unit to round the attendance to. If we said 46,753 is closer to 47,000 or 50,000, which one would be closer? It's closer to 47,000, isn't it? So I think that's, I like, I would like to report the news in the most accurate way possible. 50,000, well, 50,000 is about 3,200 more than were actually there. So that's quite a bit. But 47,000 is just about 200 more. So that's a closer number. So we are going to, I'll say I would round to 47,000, remember we said we'd round it to the thousands place, because that is an accurate estimate. Okay, 
Question five. A jet airplane holds about 65,000 gallons of gas. It uses about <coughs> 7,460 gallons when flying between New York City and Los Angeles. Round each number to the largest place value. Then find how many trips the plane can take between cities before running out of fuel. Well, I tell you what, if I'm on an airplane, I want to make sure that thing don't run out of fuel, don't you? <laughs> 65,000 gallons of gas. Okay, so let's do 65,000 gallons of gas, and then it uses about 7,460 gallons when it's flying from one place to another. Now this is round each number to the largest place value. So there and there is the largest place value of each number. So 65,000 rounded up to the 10,000th place. It's a five, five or more raise the score. So 70,000 gallons of gas and it takes about, okay, four or less, let it rest takes about 7,000 gallons to go from New York City to Los Angeles. So let's say New York, and way over here on the other side of the country is LA. So from the airplane to fly from here to here, it takes about 7,000 gallons. And its tank can hold about 70,000 gallons. So, how many trips can the plane go back and forth before it runs out of gas? Well, let's look at our two numbers, 70,000 and 7,000. Do you see anything in common between them? Mm -hmm. We've got a seven in the thousands place and a seven in the ten thousands place. So how many times can I multiply 7,000 times? What can I multiply 7,000 times to get 70,000? Because this is how many times it could fly back and forth before it ran out of gas. So 7,000 times what is 70,000? Well, how do I move from the sevens column in our place value chart, the thousands place to the ten thousands place. We Would you remember when we used to draw the little arrows, we'd go times what? Times ten. And if we do that, we also remembered we add a zero to this. There would be four zeros instead of three, and this one has four, so that's right. So the question asks, how many times can it fly back and forth before it runs out of fuel? So it could go back about ten times. Back and forth about 10 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it better refuel for sure. Okay, that's your example work for today. I want you to go finish up your math on this Friday before you have a great weekend and do the best you can and solve these problems. I can't wait to do math with you next week.